And good morning. Once again, I'm Cheryl Miller. The world knew and well knows our first guest's father and his legacy. It was 50 years ago this year that civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was felled by an assassin's bullet. Five decades later, the struggle for racial equality continues in many ways. We're joined today by Martin Luther King III, who is in town for several programs dedicated to his father's memory. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Honored to be here. You spent part of the weekend at Virginia Commonwealth University speaking and talking about your father's dream and the fact that the dream continues. Um, what were some of the things that, that the audience asked you and wanted to know about? Well, people always want to know what, what your father would uh, say about conditions today. Uh, then they wanted to know the human interest stories. Yes, he, we knew him as Martin Luther King Jr., but he also was a father. What was that like? What was your experience like growing up? Which I was able to share just the wonderful and extraordinary opportunities that we would have. We didn't have large quality of time, but the quantity was remarkable. Dad uh, playing with us football in the front yard, baseball, uh, putting us on the refrigerator and letting us jump in his arms. Uh, while we ultimately understood he was a national and international leader, he was just daddy to us. Mm -hmm. And you were very young when your father was killed, 10 years old. 10 years old. Um, and the memories that you have, I'm sure, still continue to bring you joy today that you can share with your daughter. Absolutely. I mean, that is the, probably the most rewarding experience, being able to share some of those stories. She, every, every, almost every week she asked me, Daddy, tell me a story about you and your daddy and your mommy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of one of the things you've done. You, you've written a children's book yes. that tells your father's story. Uh, it, I think writing a children's book is probably one of the most difficult things you can do because you're trying to tell a mm -hmm. lot of a story in a little bit of time. What's been the reaction to the book? You know, overwhelmingly, um, it's, it's been uh, very positive uh, because the approach that we took was an approach that, that I started off saying something like a lot of people know my father as a civil and human rights leader but do not know him. I know him distinctly as daddy. Mm -hmm. And that I shared life lessons that I learned uh, from my dad and mom uh, as a child. One of the things just very quickly that I shared in the, story, in the, in the book was uh, one day someone gave us some toy guns. Of course, dad being the, the leading proponent or one of the leading proponents of nonviolence in this nation and the world, uh, is kids having guns, that's kind of not quite right, but all the kids in the community had guns. So, uh, toy guns, I should say. Right. We were playing with the toy guns. That's what we saw on television. Well, Dad um, and Mom allowed us to do that, but then in the, at the end of the day, we put, took those guns, took them outside, and, and put them in an incinerator that we had in our backyard, or small, like a garbage can, steel garbage can, mm -hmm. and burned them up because we did not feel it was appropriate to have them. Of course, we played with them first, but then we threw them away. And that's what kids did in the 60s. They yeah. played cowboys yeah, and Indians. Right. They played Absolutely. with guns. That Absolutely. was just the way it was. And that brings up a point. There's going to be another March on Washington, mm -hmm. which in 1963, your father led a huge March on Washington talking about nonviolence. Yes. And, and this is in response to what happened yeah, in right. Parkland, Florida. They're planning that for next month. That is correct. And I, I mean, I am so... Uh, proud of those young people. They, these are uh, kids who are high school students who are leading an effort. Uh, oftentimes it's, it's older college students, sometimes older who are leading, but the children always can lead. And it's young people who are at the forefront of the struggle. It's tragic that those individuals lost their lives. It was tragic with Newtown and all the other shootings going all the way back to Columbine is what we remember. Uh, but hopefully our nation, our elected officials will address this issue for once and for all. You um, carry quite the legacy from both your father and your mother as far as being a civil rights leader. Um, do you feel that that's sometimes a burden for you? You know, I try not to uh, characterize it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly it could be construed as, as a burden. I look at um, the fact that I carry the name and the legacy as a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I hope every day I'm able to disseminate positive energy because I think people need to see more positiveness. We, we have so much negativity within our society, whether it's the news negativity, whether it's uh, in entertainment negativity. We need positive things. We need to focus because we can move to a higher level. That's what dad was trying to do in his life and mother. They were trying to take us to a higher level. I hope that I'm successful in helping us move in that direction as a nation and a world. I want to talk to you about something that happened over the weekend in the world of entertainment, and that's the movie Black Panther. Yes. And it has taken mm -hmm. um, 
entertainment to an, an nth degree, another mm -hmm. level, because mm -hmm. the movie's going to raise over $200 million yep. in three days. Yes. Uh, yes. And this is for a worldwide audience, mm -hmm. so it, it almost is a colorblind kind of thing. What does that mean to you, to, to have something that little children can look up to, yeah. children of all ages, to look yeah. up to uh, people of color? Well, first of all, that's so, so very positive to have a, an African-American, or an African, I should say, in this context, he's an African a superhero. We've never had that. And, and of course, we've always seen black as negative. And in this context, it is, it is really, and actually black is not really negative, but that's, I mean, we have black cat, you know, angel food, uh, devil food cake, angel food cake. I mean, it's, it's all these images. But this, is, this imagery is so positive, it's gonna make a profound impact on our nation and the world. Um, Hollywood, cares about money and it is making a lot of money that means there will be other films coming behind it that per personify and promote the same thing which I think uh, serves our nation and our world very well and this is also an opportunity to have people of color in all levels of entertainment you've got the director you've got yes. the actors and and then you've got the different levels mm -hmm. well and that is again that is it shouldn't be revolutionary in 2018, but unfortunately it really is. And so I applaud all of those who are involved, the creativity that they've used, uh, whether it's the costumes or just, for, I haven't seen it, but Me either. my <laughs> wife and I are going, it was sold out in Atlanta. So I was just glad to see that uh, and on all and in many places around the, the country and the world. And these are the kinds of things that your father helped us to work toward. 50 years is not a long time, but our young children today, for them, that's ancient history. It's absolutely. 1963 and then 1968. Mm -hmm. You're going to be talking to some Richmond children today yes. and sharing your book about your father. That is correct. I'm going to have an opportunity to read and share and answer questions to over a thousand kids from uh, the Richmond schools, I think, between kindergarten and second grade. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things is a thousand of those children are going to receive a copy of your book. That is correct. And we're so grateful that uh, one of the foundations was able to make that available to the children. Mm -hmm. When you talk to children, because you're a, you're a father, what do you want to tell them about the positivity of where this world is going? Because there's so many negative things going on, mm -hmm. but there are so many positive things going on as well. Well, one of the things, and, and you're absolutely correct, I, I think uh, we look at movements that are existing around the country and the, the nation and the world, and, you know, like the Me Too movement, uh, as it relates to females, is huge. Six months ago, we could not have even predicted that that would exist. But now people are having to resign from positions of authority who have been abusive to women. Uh, never should have been the case. And the other issue is gender uh, equality. I think uh, we pay women so much less than we do men in this nation. That's going to change. Uh, these are the things that are going to happen dramatically. The, the main thing I would say to, to young people is number one, we have to learn to love ourselves or be taught love of self. And from love of self, then we must also love our family. And when we love our family, we must love our community. And then when we love our community, I hope we'd have a love of God. So love of self, love of family, love of community, and love of God. And I, while I'm not advocating someone believe what I believe, I can only say that's what worked in my family. And that's what I'm in, in, inspire, hopefully inspiring our daughter uh, to engage as well in. Well, wonderful words to end our conversation on. Thank you so much, Martin, Thank for joining you. us today. Thank you for that And spending a little time today. And uh, going to be talking to students today. What an opportunity for them.